Are we just going to start today by taking a shit on Biden? Um, are we going to probably we're going to shit on um Maybe lead up to that cuz I got a lot of, I kind of I kind of want to go off on him. <laughs> All of his fucking sex crimes and shit as well cuz like None of those are proven. But did you saw that Tar Reed was like trending recently? Yeah, I saw that. I also saw the video of him grooming children. Yeah, I mean, all that stuff. I mean, it's like the new... I mean, there were all of those old videos, but like then he just had like a... He just had like a fucking couple of days, man, where he just went fucking grooming crazy. Maybe he's just an affectionate old man. <laughs> well... And it's hard to tell. Maybe those children appreciated it. <laughs> yeah. You ever see the looks in their faces? It's so fucking uncomfortable. It's really it's really disturbing. You sure that's not just the magic of editing? Yeah, because it's like one <laughs> shot. <laughs> Grandpa Joe would never harm a child. Yeah. My grandpa's name was Joe. I liked him more than Joe Biden. I'd hope so. <laughs> if he was a president, I imagine even less stuff would get done, though. Maybe not in a malicious way, just more of a nonsense, like, what's the point? I don't know what I'm trying to say. If your granddad was president? <laughs> yeah, he would just probably blaze about. Well... He's not a politician. <laughs> he has no ambitions to like. He probably would still do better than Biden, though, because he would just like. Well, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. It would be this. It, <laughs> no, that's the damning thing about Biden. Then is okay. Anyone's grandfather would be just as good as him. Meaning, like they just be kind of senile, kind of out of it, wandering around, eating ice cream, and, like, signing off on whatever their fucking handlers tell them to. It's 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 funny when people, like, kind of keep giving him agency. Like, it was his personal decision. Like, I don't really think he makes any fucking decisions anymore, man. It's so hard to imagine, honestly. Yeah, I don't think he does either. And if he does, like, he thinks he's doing something, but it's all just kind of being coaxed out of him. I don't know. I mean, he just seems so senile. <laughs> so every picture I see of him, every video is just like, he's got like two two modes. He's got like, now I'm going to start talking quietly and have a serious <laughs> look on my face. And that's when he starts to channel his sadness about his, like, dead family. And then his other mode is just like, "Hey Jack, I got a I got a two hands full of ice cream here. I don't want to talk about Israel. Get the fuck out of my way. I'm gonna run you over." Someone someone pointed out, and it's like kind of obvious in retrospect, but I saw it on Twitter. Like, um, the reason he doesn't like, well, like I we all kind of knew he wasn't gonna do like a lot of a lot, if any, like real genuine press conferences, and he's only done like one so far. I'm pretty sure. Everything else has been like sh very short speeches and then um, like public appearances. And in the public appearances, like he can do exactly what he did with the when he drove off that you, you saw that, right? In the truck? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that where he was like, this baby has 450 horsepower. Or I don't know if he said that. But no, the more recent thing. He was, was more recent one? He, he was like driving a golf cart or I don't know. He was driving something, <laughs> but oh, like I was, I was thinking of the one with the pickup truck. No, 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 not when he was. Uh, no, no, this was like really recent, like because a reporter said, like, "Do you have anything to say about like what's going on in Israel right now?" And he, um, I should just find it because his response was insane. It was so. This is the type of shit that you get again that like if Trump did it, like the resistance would be like in the streets, like losing their minds. Um, let's see. Biden run over <laughs> Israel. 
Joe Bi- Biden jokingly threatens to run over a reporter asking about Israel as he test drives new electric Ford truck. Oh, well, it was a truck, okay. And, uh, yeah. So, like, he literally ran away from the question. Or drove away, rather. Jeez. They yeah, were like... Um, yeah, I remember seeing that because, like, he did just drive away because she asked, like, one question about israel right yeah mr president can i ask you a quick question on israel before you drive away since it's so important no you can't not unless you get in front of the car and i step on it i'm only teasing biden said with laughter heard in the background then he floored the vehicle and drove away to the apparent delight of the reporters nearby that's like the key part to the apparent delight of the reporters nearby like they all just find it so amusing like and I mean, I guess you could you could make an argument like, okay, like the event wasn't a he wasn't holding a press conference on those topics, but it's like you're the president, you're not some fucking celebrity doing like a ribbon cutting ceremony. And yeah. and again, just imagine if if Trump had done that, or if anyone else had done that, if fucking That's Bernie insane. Sanders had done that. Can't even imagine Bernie Sanders. In any I of could, those, that actually, I kind of can imagine Bernie doing it. Like, I just I'm maybe saying not to even, that sort of question, more of like he'd be like, "I got work to do." Yeah, but but that's what I'm saying is he wouldn't even be doing that event. He wouldn't be yeah. like, "Hey, I got a ice cream in one hand and the steering wheel in the other, Jack." Like my whole life is just going from one ice cream parlor to the next. Yeah, no, Ber- Bernie would be. It characteristically like doing shit which i guess like i don't even really want to talk about this but i guess it's worth mentioning but like all the fucking shit about bernie sanders like a uh, hotel requirements did you catch any of that i didn't catch that oh man it's like his his rider not even like i guess you could call it that but it was just for like his campaign team to know like his basic preferences for um, when they stay at hotels on the, like on the campaign trail and people are trying to make it seem like, look at this socialist wanting to be pampered like a rock star. So look at his demands. His demands were, his demands were real simple. I'm sure they were very simple. It was like, if the hotel has it, like so many of the requests are like, If possible, like, he's not even saying, like, I must demand this. It was like, if possible, like, a king-size bed, please. (laughs) If possible, uh, like, a comforter on the bed. And, if and like, an extra one in the closet, something like that. And then he likes his room cold, which I find kind of funny. (laughs) I like my room cold, to be honest. Uh, you and Bernie are one and the same there. He says, like, he and, he, like, probably, this is probably the most fussy thing, and it's not even fussy, really. It's like, it's like to make sure the guy can get some fucking sleep. Like, if he's not comfortable, he can't sleep. But um, it was like, he wants the room to be, like, 60 degrees. Um, and, if like, if possible, have it prepared to be that temperature when Please? he gets there really sound like pretty um yeah it's just like you touch the th- you hit the thermostat down to 60 before you Ge- yeah yeah it sounds um, like generic stuff and then like his his food demands were like so hilariously humble they were like <laughs> i saw the i saw the whole list like someone like leaked the actual memo it was like one bottle red gatorade um Green tea with honey. And that's because he talks all the time, you know? His voice is so hoarse mm-hmm. all the time. And the, the bottle of Gatorade, that's a bit much. Yeah. I, um, that actually, honestly, was the most, like, um sort I, of... I, uh, I was uh, with Bernie until now, but finding out that he's a Gatorade <laughs> user. Can the man just... But, but it was very... Spe- on water? It was very specified to be one bottle of Gatorade. Like, like don't overdo it. Like, like it was like his treat for the day. It was like his bottle of Gatorade. And people then it was say, like, and then he wanted. The right. reason he didn't take it to Biden when they were having their debate 
was because he showed up to his hotel and they had a blue bottle of Powerade in there. And he was just like really thrown off the rest of the day. He trashed the whole room, threw the TV out the window. <laughs> had, had there been a red bottle of Gatorade that day, might have a different future right now. <laughs> and then the, uh, and the other thing was something like, um, like a really modest, uh, like a couple of bags of like, and it was like, it was like, dealer's choice it was like either walnuts cashews or almonds <laughs> like that was the only food he wanted <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> and like this fucking thing just like blew up uh, all over the news like it was, uh, i guess someone wrote someone wrote a book about the campaign i don't even know who obviously it's someone who doesn't like bernie um and they like they're the ones who like leaked this damning information just so ridiculous yeah that was uh that was one of the big distracting stories of the week i guess i completely missed that and i i don't know i don't think it matters at all it does it's actually really frustrating why is he still being attacked He's neutered now. He doesn't even do anything anymore. He's got nothing, man. He's got no power. He does everything Biden asks. Like, it's just like kicking people when they're down. I mean, I honestly think it's just one of those, like, there's all there's always shit going on in the Biden administration. So it's like, hey, this is a fluff bullshit news article can just kind of like distract people. And it does kind of work. Because even like left Twitter like couldn't stop making fun of it for Talking like about it. so many days. Um, yeah. But when I read when I read the actual list, it just made me laugh. Especially the like, like the and like the final thing was like the request of nuts. <laughs> I get that. I really like nuts, which you probably know about me, but I can't imagine. I, 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 I'm such a failure in life that I can't imagine having jobs that give me a hotel. <laughs> Don't most hotel rooms have a king size bed, anyways? I mean, does he really? What does he need a king size bed? That's a big bed. Yeah, it's not that unusual. That's, but I mean, that's, that's his point. Is like, you know, just make sure I get one of the rooms with the with the bigger bed. And like some of the other demands were just like. They were like security things that that like he shouldn't even have to personally ask. It was like when his family's traveling with him, like he'd like them to be in like adjoining, like his grandchildren to be in like adjoining rooms and stuff like that. Oh, because he likes to be close to his grandchildren. What a monster. That's terrible. What kind of seasoned politician wants to see their family? There's... I imagine for most politicians, seeing their family just reminds them of the time that they spent at Epstein's. Yeah. It's like, oh, my daughter looks a lot like the kid I fucked last week. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I do. I my wonder, daughter's daughter. I do wonder what Biden's, uh, um, I don't know, list of campaign trail demands were. Bathtub, bathtub filled with ice cream, Jack. I just want to swim in it. See, <laughs> Only the finest amphetamines to shoot directly into the base of my spine. I'm on a kick of trying to give up uh, sweets, which is really fucking hard for me because I have a giant sweet tooth. Not really trying to change anything else, but I just realized that I eat like two or three candy bars a day and decided it's time to stop. Time to stop the uh, the sweet train. Yeah. No more honeyed peanuts for Jason Newland. No more Reese cups. Yeah, I had a moment yesterday of like literally writing down shit that I need to do to get things in order. Very Somewhat. self-healthy, healthy of you. Yeah. It's okay. I sometimes think that I should go back to journaling. It's one of the few, like, I guess self-help things that I actually think has some merit to it. It, it probably like, does, but I, I'm laughing just because this was not journaling. This was like, this was like five bullet points written on my notes app that I then made the, the, the background on my phone just so I wouldn't forget it. 
You've never heard of the productivity system, the bullet journal? I guess not. Well, it's where you sit down every day and you use a different series of bullets to map out what your plan for the day is. It is a best-selling productivity system that made whoever made it very, very rich. Step one, make the bullet journal book. It's funny. Seems like one of the easiest ways to get rich is just tell people real generic shit. They should already know. Yeah, I wish I didn't have any kind of conscience. Make your bed every day. You'll feel better about yourself. (laughs) Thanks for listening to my talk. It would be funny is just to like, is to uh, be to make a a book called the 13 rules for life and then just copy Jordan Peterson's rules, but like reword them, reword them just enough to where I couldn't get sued. Yeah. Just call it the 13 fucking rules for life. (laughs) Just add some curses in between each of them to make it edgy. (laughs) <laughs> just put the word fuck between every other word. Just copy and paste Jordan Peterson's book. But put fuck between every, literally every other word. Yeah, I don't think there'd be any legal problems with that. <laughs> That's not plagiarism. It's actually how I wrote my university essays. What, just? I'd just find like an academic paper and then I'd fuck in between every word. <laughs> Actually, the only thing that I made sure to do in university, which I might have brought up on the podcast, I'm going to talk about how dumb I am. I I love to use the word assess as much as possible, just because I liked the ideal of my professors having read asses over and over again. <laughs> no, you've never told me that. <laughs> I'd remember that. <laughs> in ways, assess is my favorite word. It's very... <laughs> That's very. <laughs> it's just so funny that that was in college <laughs> and not elementary school. <laughs> uh, oh, I was uh, not the most mature person. <laughs> it does make some um, reading more fun if you always just read the word assess as asses. I just never, it's <laughs> never crossed my mind until now. <laughs> That would have been like a revelation in, I don't know, sixth Middle grade. He walked out in the gray light and stood and he saw for a brief moment the absolute truth of the world. The cold relentless circling of the intestate earth. Darkness implacable. The blind dogs of the sun in their running. The crushing black vacuum of the universe. And somewhere 200 animals trembling like ground foxes in their cover. Borrowed time and borrowed world and borrowed eyes with which to sorrow it. And lo, for the earth was empty of form, and void, and darkness was all over the face of the deep, and we said, look at that fucker dance. Welcome to our podcast, Heat Death of the Universe. It is eight minutes past 11, 11 a.m. Do the math. It is May 31st, 2021, and it's a bright gray Monday morning here in Seoul, South Korea. And we're your late morning zoo crew, um, JD and the 
The Joshua. <laughs> Mutashio. JD and the Jaguar. Rar. That's Cooter right. I'm, the recorded, I'm recording with a cat today. I've got good news, Josh. The What's left that? loves us. Who? The left. They love us. Yeah, same Me? way they love Joe Biden. Oh, weird Joe Biden. I imagine we're liked just as much as him going by all the down votes. <laughs> Shots fired. Um, What's life without a bit of self-deprecation? Yeah. Yeah. So there's How something. Many... Oh, there's just a... going <laughs> to <laughs> go for it. There's the things in the news. We're going to talk about them. One of them, I guess let's start with maybe the one, probably the funniest headline at least. Um, which is from the hill. It reads, Biden's leadership is threatened by his loyalty to the hard left. Not just the left, the hard left. The tumescent left, the erect left. Well, the the hard left is actually his um, L-sectional couch. (laughs) It's like one of those uh, hard psychology couch beds that just has the one armrest. The Ch- Chase Lounge. That's it. We call those a hard left where I'm from. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> and his loyalty is to his hard left psych bed. Well, it, get, it has the one armrest, so then the other one's free to uh, shove ice cream in his big stupid dumb senile face with his have- fifth uh it's like he it, it looks like he's been having this that the the facelift procedure from brazil did you ever see that movie i never saw i brazil. should say the the movie i don't brazil. know how i've never seen brazil i just rewatched yeah. it uh recently it's it's very very good um anyway joe biden sucks still and I don't know, it just seems like he sucks more and more every every time I look up. Um But yeah, just this article is is so remarkably dumb. It just seems like satire. Like how could this be in any way serious? And I mean I guess you you summed it up before as um <laughs> Okay. Like the they the way this 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 writer views what Biden is doing these days is that he's accommodating the squad too much. Those congressional socialists it says his call for unity is a tall order, but possible only if he begins to tell the squad and congressional socialists no with more frequency, especially on the border, on racial just- relations, and on Iran. I'll just say it's hard to it's hard to say no to anything if they don't ask for anything. Yeah, what are, what are these people talking about? Uh, I mean, I guess that reminds me of like there was some again just more fucking intentionally distracting bullshit, meaningless news. Um, so news is usual. Yeah, uh, it was. Um, Rashid Tlaib, like, uh, con- um, confronting Biden on the tarmac. Did you see see that shit? I didn't see that. Okay. Well, so like from a distance, it so you could you can read whatever you want into it. You'd be like, oh look, she's really telling him what's what. But like, they could just be like, they could also just be talking about the weather. Like, <laughs> you can't tell what's going on from that far away. Joe, have you ever thought about trying gelato? <laughs> Damn you. I'll never eat gelato. Well, I'm a blue-blooded American. I eat ice cream. <laughs> ice cream, damn it. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I pay, like it's presumed that she was she was giving him some shit about the way he's reacting to what's going on current like at the very this very moment in Israel, Palestine, and um 
Yeah, I mean, it amounts to nothing. Like, but I, I think, like, soon after that, Biden made some just very, very lukewarm, um, said some couple of nice words about her because she was, like, in the audience. And, um, yeah, he was just like, uh, I see my good friend there. She's a good person. She's a good, she's a good congresswoman. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure her family's okay, because she's got family in Palestine. Yeah. And I'll do everything I can to make things right. Yeah. And then nothing, you know, dead silence, whatever, of course. Like, but I mean, the bigger issue is how people are like, like, yeah, you go girl, like freaking out. Like, like she's really telling him what's up. And, um, no, she's not. <laughs> No, she's not. Aren't we the only country that's not like you know calling Israel out on war crimes? Uh, I mean, we're, we're probably the most powerful one, not to, and we're the one who funds Israel more than anyone else. But I mean, it's yeah, our I territory, mean, right? It's basically a U.S. territory. Yeah, it's like I mean, it. I mean, we have it's, a nuclear arsenal. I mean, it's kind of analogous to like a lot of like like sort of proxy war areas that the U.S. has all around the world, including I would say where we live right now. Um, I mean, granted, South Korea isn't um, uh, bombing North Korea on a daily basis. Um, not yet. Well, <laughs> they're not going to. I mean, oh. I mean that's that's another sort of side tangent on a side tangent on a side tangent, but like. Um, Biden just met Moon Jae-in kind of recently. Or did they just talk? Did they meet in person? I can't even remember. They might have met in person. Moon Jae-in was in Atlanta recently. Okay, well, then they must have met. But, uh, like, Moon Jae-in is, like, he's, like, I would say he's he's basically, like, a centrist, like a center, center-left center liberal type. Um, yeah, he's really which means that by he, a lot of his supporters now because... He definitely had the Obama vibe of like he was going to come in and change a ton of stuff and like really just like change how things worked here. But he's kind of just like laid down to every uh, Che Ball demand. Yeah, there's that. And but there's also like, I mean, and that's 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 a big deal. But like and those those demands and the, like Che Ball is like, for those who don't know, it's like kind of the uh, 10 biggest companies in South Korea that basically are like the mafia of this country. And they also happen to be like the richest families in Korea. Yeah. They're I mean, all the, like the dynasties, they're not just companies. They're like rural, rural families or whatever. Which is why I made the, like the mafia comparison, I guess. Cause it's like, that makes sense. Um, but it's, it's the U S like, um, the U S power over this country is really kind of disgusting. And, um, I mean, one, one very like pressing example of that is how South Korea has like, is very, 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 very behind on vaccinating people. Um, they haven't even gotten to below, um, 75 years old yet. Um, I mean, they did like, you know, the frontline workers, the military, the military got top priority, of course. Um, and then, you know, healthcare workers, which I agree with even more so. Um, but because, I mean, what the fuck? What does the military do here? Like they they live on their bases. They don't they're not like interacting with they're probably safer off on those bases than people in regular society. But anyway, they get like top priority too. People but, like soldiers, man. <laughs> I know. But the way the way things are looking is like you and I are unless we unless we get one of these no show vaccines, um, we're probably not gonna be able to get a vaccine here until next year, I feel like. See, I was thinking August, but that's just me being hopeful. The only reason I think that's because there is a lot of like word that they want to get teachers vaccinated mainly because the children yeah that makes sense i mean if something okay but i'm saying like the they're not gonna like go down to the um 
the more general populace, the like 18 to 65 years old, like bracket for a while. Um, yeah, well, I mean, vaccines basically aren't being shipped to other countries from what little reading I've done. Yeah, and it all comes down to just a lack of supply. It's nothing like, I mean, I think that if Korea had enough vaccines, we would all be vaccinated here by now. Like, they uh, would probably do it very quickly and very efficiently. Yeah, the stuff I've read is actually the uh, vaccines they have given out. They've been hyper efficient about getting them out for what they have. Yeah. The problem just, is, really is just a shortage. And the U.S., um, as much as they claim to care about their ally, South Korea, like, they're like, no, fuck you. We, we, we got ours. What are you saying? They made sure all the South Korean troops got vaccines recently. Was it, or was it just the the American tr- uh, GIs who are stationed over here? No, they provided them for South Korean troops too. I think mainly. Oh yeah, the, South Korean, because that... they they have so many joint bases. Yeah. In any case, China is ready and willing to give like all the vaccines Korea needs, and Korea will not buy them from China because of. Well, Polit- po- because of politics, just the way that it looks, because it it would be seen as like a an affront to the U.S., who apparently this country relies still so much on. Korea and China are having a bit of a spew right now anyways. I don't know how much you know about that, but like Korea is real mad at China because uh, China has been trying to take, um, which this is not, this is kind of fucked up of China and China's done this with other places, but they're trying to like... <sighs> appropriate korea's culture in a weird way where they're like started this like a uh, campaign within china to be like we created the hanbok we created kimchi all this stuff was originally from china and like they're doing this like educational thing sort of like they've done with like taiwan and some other places to be like korea is actually just part of china so a lot of koreans are just like more mad at china right now than normal because china is basically claiming that korea cultural stuff is from china and theirs and even if there's some truth to it, I can see why it makes the public. I was going to say, man, I mean, there is probably some truth to that. Considering. Don't say that to your Korean friends. I, I, you, you're going to end up in a. It's like when you say anything nice about Japan, it just doesn't go over well. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, man, cultures intermingle. And like, in any case. Um, yeah, but like. I've mentioned like Korean coworkers, Korean friends, the Chinese vaccine. I would actually be down for taking the Chinese vaccine. I don't really fucking care which vaccine I take. I'd take the Russian one. It doesn't matter. Um, no, the Chinese and the Russian ones are like just as vetted as any of the other, uh, any of the fucking giant uh, U.S. corporation ones. Bring it up to a Korean coworker, and they'll be like, "No fucking way!" Like basically everyone I've asked, they're like, "No way, I would touch this stuff." Because oh. they're xenophobic, they're they're racist. <laughs> well, also, I'm sure if I brought up like my dad's already vaccinated, but if I brought up to like my dad's like, Dad, would you have done the Chinese vaccine if you got it earlier? I'm sure you'd be like, No. Yes, well, no, because no, they're no, all no. they're all like <laughs> under the drug of anti Chinese propaganda. Um, I mean, this I'm not saying China is a is is a sin free like perfect nation, but oh like, no, I I fucking wake up and curse China some mornings. Mainly because I wake up and it's like, holy shit, the air quality is bad. God yeah, but, damn but it, it. Why did that's China a, have to build all those factories? But again, a lot of that is propaganda as well. Do you know how many fucking coal fire pack factories there are in Korea? I do, but I, I, there, I remember there's he, a lot of truth to the Chinese pollution stuff. Mm, um, yeah, well, I don't know. I didn't expect to go on this side tangent, but like... <laughs> China is probably doing a lot more in terms of innovating like green energy, at least like, like at least plotting it out and planning it for the, for the somewhat immediate future than this country is. And definitely more than the United States is. Unless that, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell what's propaganda and what's not sometimes, but I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm maybe I'm becoming a mouthpiece for China all of a sudden, but. Shut up China. I just think I think that I think a lot of uh, I mean just the this this sudden I mean it's not sudden actually I mean Trump was like wanting to start a war with China as well but again that's another thing that's just like seamlessly 
passed through to Biden. And except now it's cool. Now it's okay. <laughs> now it's cool to <laughs> want to uh, beat China in all of the races to the top. Um, yeah, and good luck on that, you fucking stupid country, United States. You know what would actually help the U.S. <clears throat> you know close the gap between countries like China? Free education. Yeah, all kinds of things. I mean, with uh, yeah, I mean just just look at the difference between coronavirus in both countries. Like, and 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 people. People who even like believe like because either you'll hear people say, "Oh, well, they didn't report the numbers properly," which is probably true to some extent. But I think most countries aren't reporting the numbers properly. Um, I I know the United States isn't. Um, it would probably require way more systematic tests than just about any country's willing to do or even capable of to report the numbers. But like Beijing has been like case free for a while and 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 so you either hear people say um well that's just ch- chinese propaganda that's a lie cuz there's still tons of coronavirus there more way more people died or then they just go well yeah they did better than us but that's cuz their lockdowns were so draconian it's like well they worked didn't they <laughs> like yeah. lockdowns fucking work <laughs> anyway um what else is on the the roster here on the old docket? Um, I mean, I guess what we were just saying kind of goes into the. Uh, I mean, we might as well just let's just get this out of the way. This fucking mask issue in the United States. Okay. Um, there were a couple of uh, polls done recently. So this goes into what we've already talked about on the show, which was the the new CDC guidance th- th- thing, and um, uh. We'll see if YouTube doesn't let me put this up again because I'm talking about what's in mainstream news, but they don't like it. Um, let's see here. Uh, it's because you're not positive that it's over. So, <laughs> yeah. Color me slightly skeptical. Um, six six to 700 people are still dying every day in the U.S. I, I feel like that doesn't count as it being finished. Um Searches for fake vac- fake COVID vaccine cards spiked when the CDC announced new mask guidance based on an honor system. So yeah, I mean, there's the like the moment that news went up, it, and it's exactly like I said, like people aren't gonna look at the fine print about like, oh, well, you don't have to wear masks except in this situation, this situation, this situation. No, 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 no. Right. people just hear I don't have to wear masks. Like, oh. Le- should get me one of those fake COVID <laughs> uh, I mean, vaccine cards. Did you see the controversy in Nashville yesterday? Maybe, maybe you don't pay attention to Tennessee as like I do. I don't um, think I did. But um, uh, yesterday, or I guess the past day or so in Tennessee, there was this a uh, big gathering in Nashville of people. Uh, I guess they had these like uh, Star of Davids that they had put oh, in the middle. It was like uh, not vaccinated and okay. That started in Nashville? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I saw it going around, but I didn't know like that it was like a Tennessee thing. And basically just, uh, what was it, referring to themselves as like the prosecuted Jews, the unvaccinated, and that everyone was prosecuting them for not wanting to vaccinate, which, which actually they should. I think vaccination should be required, and you're kind of crazy if you don't want to get one, but... um. Yeah, I mean, like, but I'm also pretty sure these are the same fuckers who aren't going to wear a mask, and they're even less likely to wear a mask now that it's like not legally required. Well, that leads into my second headline here: unvaccinated Americans twice as likely to feel comfortable ditching masks. Poll finds as mandates lift. So, <laughs> unvaccinated people are more more confident in. Or, or uh, what's another way to put it? Care less about spreading the disease, rather, than people who are vaccinated who will continue to wear masks. Well, I ain't got the virus yet, so I gotta be safe. <laughs> I don't have anything to worry about. I'm like a billion times bigger than a fucking virus. I'll just punch it. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, it could be like that thing when like Trump suggested like nuking the fucking hurricane or whatever. Do you remember <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like <clears throat> even for Trump. Like when I first heard that that story, I was like, that can't be real, right? But apparently, it was. He just wanted to use a nuke, man. But someone, I think someone yeah, even some... like, they're like, we asked an expert what would happen if you tried to nuke a hurricane. And it was like, well, actually, it would just like spread the radiation like even further and wider than you expect normally. It's like, yeah, that makes sense, I guess, too. Imagine that. It's just so funny that, it, yeah, that goes into line with like, I, I see, I, I can't even differentiate between like parody articles and real articles a lot of the time now, but I, I saw some kind of article, whether it was real or not, it was still funny. It was like, Florida man shoots gun at tornado or whatever. <laughs> um, That's that probably was, real. That was like the, yeah, that was the equivalent of Trump's like nuke the hurricane thing, but. Did the uh, bullet like get spun around and go back at the man? <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, just a little like they they went into detail too on this. Um, oh, both of these ar- articles I've referenced just now are both in Forbes for whatever that's worth. My favorite publication. <laughs> um, they've got great money management advice, and you know, with my large sums of money, I always have to think about how to manage it. I mean, this was a small poll as well, but I think it. I think it does kind of reflect a lot, a fair amount of people, enough people to where it's going to be a problem. I think. Um, but anyway, we went on about this. Well, it's recently. only a problem for the people who chose not to get the vaccine, and I'm sure some of these eugenic, uh, no children, fucks, are okay with that. Yeah, I mean. Even if even if that were ethical, if that were fine, there are plenty of innocent people that want to get the vaccine who can't. Um, what are some of those of reasons? reasons? I mean, well, we can't get it because we're in the wrong country at the moment. But the main reason I've heard is you can't get off work. Yeah, I mean, I think that would probably be one of the bigger reasons in the U.S. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty of shots to go around and. I don't know. Anyway, fucking COVID. Uh, it's too easy to get caught up in talking about it. Um, It'll be a fading memory one day. I'll just say it's not gonna. It's it's not gonna really be over for a long time. I have a sinking feeling. But please, uh, world, prove me wrong. Let's see. Um, I guess this goes in line as well. So this is another um this is another great example of um greatest moments in capitalism. Uh millions of dollars of COVID ventilators found dumped in South Florida landfill as the US government finds that cheaper that finds it cheaper than exporting them to countries where they are needed. Seems legit cost benefit analysis man it's just it's it's just dispassionate simple financial math um yeah i mean i'm seeing like there's a video of it right now it's just like these pristine boxes just (laughs) thrown into a fucking landfill um yeah i don't know i mean i don't even know what else there's to say about that it's just insane um it was insane. I'd seen that. Oh, I was trying to find his name. There was a, um, I want to say Florida man. Oh, maybe it's always a Florida man um, who was recently arrested, like in the past day or so, for stealing 200 ventilators. Maybe it was from this uh, landfill. No. Well, I guess it could be. It's in Florida. It's true. Or maybe this is happening all over the country. It's like we have excess of uh, ventilators. It's cheaper to toss them in the fucking trash. It's just so... Because uh, you just extrapolate from there and think about all 
all of the stuff that gets done like this. Like it's like it it's it's like a larger scale version in a way. Well, actually, it's lesser. Just I'm thinking about like you know like restaurants, like just how they waste food, you know, and like yeah. lock lock the fucking dumpsters so homeless people can't like get a hold of it. It's like a, a, a weirdly extreme version of that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the because there could be lawsuits and other things if homeless people are eating like leftover product, or it could just start a bad precedent. Like, why would anyone buy anything if they know they can show up at the end of the day to get everything from the bakery for free? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing um, humiliating about digging through the trash for your food. I'm sure the average person would be all for it. I know um, that a billion years ago when I worked at a grocery store that it was a no-no to um, let anyone have the stuff we threw away at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean that's that's the standard practice. It's funny too cuz like you'll you any of those places that do that, which is probably almost every at least every like major corporate run kind of store is <laughs> out front like by the cash register. It's like put your spare change into this this thing for charity or like McDonald's is proud to promote like uh Michelle Obama's new exercise kids need to exercise plan <laughs> yeah. or whatever is this like charity uh, charity up front fucking like I don't know murderous waste in the back as it should be <laughs> yeah just the picture of these ventilators is just pissing me off <laughs> I gotta <laughs> click away from it now <laughs> um can't they just use them in the future? Yeah, at the very like, least, just put them into storage, for God's sakes. I mean, I Why don't really the know fucking dump? Exactly how ventilators work, but if they're not broken, can't you just, yeah, put them in storage? They're not even opened, man. Do they if you see the picture, if you see what? the pic, If you see the picture, they're like unopened medical equipment, like in like pristine boxes. Is the storage just too expensive? I guess I'm sure they. I mean, storage costs more than throwing stuff in the dump. So yeah. Yeah. Is it more expensive than zero? Yeah. <laughs> so that's their oh. whole. That I mean. That's cost analysis. That is for the you. logic of capitalism. I guess. I guess everything's a spreadsheet. Yeah, and then you know, just seeing that and thinking about like. All the vaccines being withheld around the world for absolutely zero reason, zero good reason, that is. Um, it's enough to make a person crazy. Um, it's always funny when you and I sort of, this is a peek behind the curtain, like plan like a a more loose, like less, <laughs> less intense. Serious? Less serious episode and it just be, always turns into like... <laughs> pandemic everything's fucked um it's still hard to talk about anything else even though some people are sure it's over it's just the mu I, I i was talking to our friend jude yesterday all about this because um i always get the feeling that jude's on the same wavelength as us about this yeah he he is and um but he um <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say, but, um, I really want it to be over. Don't get me wrong. It's just like, I think people are like counting their chickens before they're hatched. And I do think like the vaccine is going to eventually solve everything. It's just like not getting it spread out to the globe is like a giant problem. Yeah. It's just, oh yeah. We were talking about just the attitude of like, it's all over now. <laughs> like, especially in the u.s i feel like but maybe that's just because that's where i i focus most, most of, of your uh, consumption from yeah but it especially does feel like that and americans are like pathologically optimistic in, in, in like a psychotic kind of way um which is number uh, one there's that but it's like it's just kind of like Oh, everything's gonna be fine. Like we get get over it, you know. Like, like uh, innovation's gonna save the day or whatever. And 
And the and the fact that uh, I don't know, it's just I think like the average person doesn't even know how these vaccines work at all. Like they don't understand that while you reduce your your ability to, to transmit, you can still transmit. Or people just don't care, and they're like, "Well, I got vaxxed, so even if I get it ten more times, I'm not gonna die. Like at the very least, yeah. it's not gonna kill me." As far yeah. as, and 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 it's, again, it's like as far as anyone knows, like we we were saying forever, like how you know the quickest vaccine to be like finalized before these vaccines um, was the one for rabies, which took five years of like uh, trials and research and stuff. But anyway. Um, yeah. With these, I think they'd already done a lot of research just for like H1N1 viruses, but there was, yeah, there was research into coronaviruses in general. That's true. Was, um, they were from talking to some friends who were more in the science fields, like I think a lot of like medical professionals were expecting this type of pandemic to happen at some point. Yeah. So there was some preparation for it. I think we actually bombed, like there is preparation for it, but then I think that uh, as far as how it was implemented, it was mostly bombed throughout the whole thing, but that's, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Um, I just think it's, an, I, I, I just think it's important to, to stress that it's not over. <laughs> like, no, and people are gonna people are gonna vaccinated. go fucking buck wild this whole summer, man. It, it, I just don't see it ending well. I don't know. Oh, be fine for the vaccinated people, and those are you know but, the but, good middle class working people. Well, they should cross their fingers and hope that the Indian strains don't uh, take over the United States because if they do, they might be just as fucked as everybody else. Anyway, um. Speaking of disease, Jeff Bezos, uh, man, did you know dad. he really needed a loan? He needed a big government loan. Why? Because um, he's he's crying because um, he feels like Elon Musk is winning the space wars, um, and he wants to win the space wars. So that sniveling little. You can't let Elon Musk have a um, reptile monopoly on the space program. Why not? <laughs> Who cares? They're all fucking doomed to failure anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I knew about the loan. Yeah, ten billion, right? Ten billion dollars. So <laughs> another was another it a loan or a bailout? I thought it was like his uh, company was failing, and they were just like granting him the money. That wasn't even a loan, that it was more of just like a grant, like a free $10 billion. That's a good question. I think it's actually just we're giving this to you because it's an in, they they it's an investment in the future. It's an investment in America's future. That kind yeah, of Yeah, I, I don't think it's a loan. I don't it's, think he ever has to pay it back. I think they literally just give him $10 billion. Well, and the thing is, is <laughs> this guy is worth like what is it? A hundred and eighty billion dollars, something oh, some, like that. Something ridiculous. Why does he need ten billion dollars from the government? I mean, I know that. Like, so while I was on my ner more nerdy parts of the internet, I found a um, a chart diagramming the people on Earth who are richer than Smog. You know who Smog is, right? Smog, the dragon from the Hobbit. I thought you were going to say Bill Callahan's musical project. No. <laughs> Dress sexy at my funeral, my good wife. Someone analyzed the treasure hoard of Smog in mm -hmm. his cave in the Misty Mountains and pretty much figured out an equivalent um, worth of it, making Smog, Smog would have been the eighth richest creature in the current world, but like <laughs> Bezos is above him. By, that is a, a very nerdy calculation. <laughs> <laughs> it is, <laughs> but it uh, it makes his point pretty clearly. You know, I think Smog is, while a terrible person who who basically just goes and burns down villages for no reason other than he enjoys human flesh and collecting their belongings, is still a nicer creature than Jeff Bezos. Yeah. One funny thing about so the um the I guess the act uh 
that is that it, this that is ordering this in the government was is uh, actually Chuck Schumer's like brainchild called the Endless Frontier Act, which as a name is just in hilarious. It's just. It's like something out of fucking Orwell or, you know, just like dystopian science fiction. They can just send all the unvaccinated to space. Then we don't have to worry about coronavirus anymore. <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't want to spend the money to send ventilators to another part of the country or, or to another country, God forbid. That it's cheaper to throw them in the trash. Then by extension, I think it might be just cheaper to throw the unvaccinated people into the fucking dump. But, um, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it would just be hilarious if they're like, all right, we're developing a, like a leper colony for the uh, for the unvaxxed on the moon. It really would be like Heinlein's book, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, where, like, I like that book. I haven't read it in a long time. Um, I never read it. What what happens to the to the people on the moon i mean it's been a long time since i've read it i know highland's kind of problematic from a left perspective but just just bear with me because i i liked his books when i was in middle school i liked a lot of stuff when i was in middle school basically at some point in the future they realize there's uh precious minerals to be mined from the moon so they send basically all the workers or lower class people up to the moon to just work as miners on the moon and um they have really shitty living conditions etc cetera, etc cetera. And after hundreds of years of this, they get real sick of it and um, revolt and realize they can just throw moon rocks at the earth and they end up like destroying the earth by launching moon rocks at it. And uh, it's kind of like a parable that if you don't treat your workers nicely, that they're all going to uprise and destroy everything. So, that doesn't sound, that sounds like it almost like a, yeah, a, that sounds like a very, it does pro, as I say pro it. labor <laughs> message. I, see, this is the where I'm getting confused because I feel like I've heard now I need to research why because I don't remember why, but I've heard from others that Heinlein is problematic on the left. But at least that book, which is like I think the only book I've actually read by him because I never read Starship Troopers, even though I love the movie Starship Troopers. Um, is he the one who wrote that? Yeah, he wrote the book Starship Troopers. He wrote, um, I didn't know that. A stranger in a strange land i think that's his most famous one that's the, yeah that, that's though. the one people have told me that i would probably like um, i mean i really never when i was it. younger i haven't read a moon as a harsh mistress since i was like 14 or 15 which is a long time ago but we're liking it well if if his novelization of starship troopers didn't have any of the paul verhoven like uh spin on it then i guess it would be seen as like a kind of pro right-wing fascist book i still think even at the end of it i haven't read the novel but i get the feeling even at the end of his novel that it probably turns out that the aliens are not necessarily evil yeah i feel like i'm not sure though i have to i'd have to read them and i don't have time for that shit because we're reading other books right now true true about real evil people but now I'm curious where I did get into my mind that Heinlein is problematic for the left. Maybe I just think everyone's problematic for the left. I mean, I'm taking a very quick, very, very quick skimming of the uh, criticisms section uh, uh, and the reception oh. part of Look, the Starship Gizmodo, novel. Gizmodo has an uh, article. First article I see is how Robert Heinlein went from socialist to right wing libertarian. Bet this could answer a lot of my questions. Yeah, maybe the moon is a harsh mistress was written during his socialist period. It sounds like it, and that could explain why it doesn't seem to be to be that um, Highland was using any sort of like uh, I don't know, sort of irony or satire in the book. It was just a straight up like. This is cool. <laughs> it would be cool to be the fascists on this side. But then again, maybe I just misremember what happens in the moon as a harsh mistress because Milton, Milton Friedman praised Heinlein's 1966 novel, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Yeesh, that's not a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> no. so. well, 
Maybe Perhaps all the I stu- read it too long ago. Maybe all the stuff you said happens, but that it's him like warning warning the elites of like Which, you've got to at least give them something, otherwise they're gonna they're gonna overthrow you with revolution. Which chronicled an anti this is how they put it in the quote, which chronicled an anti-status rebellion on a lunar colony as a wonderful book and committed Heinlein for popularizing the slogan. I did not realize he popularized this slogan. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch. So they're saying that the moon people destroying Earth with moon rocks was like, uh, I'm by moon people, you know what I mean? Um, that that's like a that was like a libertarian uprising, not a socialist one. Mm. If, if it's it's so. anti-statist, I guess that that's funny. Well, we should try. We, I mean, like any good scientist, we should put this into into action as a real experiment. Uh, get all uh, the lip. get all the libertarians on a on one of Bezos's new fucking rocket ships. Yeah, it sounds like he just went through like some massive change of personality because later in life as a libertarian, he'd rail against loafers in the welfare state. But in his leftist days, he knew how much he depended on the government. As he acknowledged in 1941, the country has been very good to me and the taxpayers have supported me for many years. Yeah, that's like that's like that classic annoying switch from like someone who they got all those benefits from like a new deal and, and, and the great society uh, eras of history. And then as soon as the fucking hippies came out, they were like, fuck this shit. It's gone overboard. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it's because they're old then. And like in basically in like leisurely comfortable retirement stage. And I mean, yeah, that, that's that's where that uh, one of the most annoying phrases ever this comes from. Quote from Heinlein. I'm I've got pro- bigger problems with them now. One of his quotes is: "The real problem of the Far East is not that so many of them are communists, but simply that there are so many of them." Jesus, fuck that guy. I take it back. Did he I say that like a, during like mid Vietnam War, probably. He wrote it in a 1954 travel book. Oh, wow. Even before Nam. Yikes. Well, I think I'm taking Stranger in a Strange Land off my and he said, list. Even <laughs> Heinlein concluded even space travel wouldn't be able to open enough room to get rid of them. Good God. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've officially decided fuck Heinlein. Sorry that I mentioned his book on the podcast. I get it. <laughs> It, I mean, it's fine to it's fine to like read stuff with people with shitty politics, but like yeah, I mean, I've I done want, a lot I, of it. I, I wonder how good his books even hold up, though. I mean, I've never read any of them, so I don't know. But it was I, when I was, you know, early teens, even before then, like probably around age eleven or so. I just got obsessed with checking out everything from the science fiction and fantasy section of my public library. I lived real close to it, and uh, actually, I love the public library. That's something that I miss living in Korea. I realize there's, there's actually some really nice libraries in Korea, but they're not really nice for, you know, non-native Korean speakers. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for various you gotta reasons. Really, you got to really uh, build up your Korean skills if you want to enjoy the libraries here, I would say. Um, Have you been- yeah, I live right by a pretty nice one. Surely um you've been to uh Korean libraries. It's always amazing to me how quiet they are. They like, make Ameri- they make American libraries seem loud in comparison. That's interesting. I never I never I've, thought libraries were noisy in the US ever. They're really. not, but does I just feel like Korean ones are like extremely quiet. It's amazing to me. Like I, I go into them and I start to feel a bit ashamed for like walking. <laughs> Um, just quick back to this Bezos thing. Um, so he, like the whole thing came out of, I'll just read like a little, this is from the intercept fucking intercept. (sighs) Free Daniel Hale, the intercept, you fucking cowards. Anyway, he they wrote, Now that Jeff Bezos' space flight company, Blue Origin, has lost a multi-billion dollar contract to Elon Musk's SpaceX, Congress is prepping the ground for Bezos to win a contract anyway. 
ordering NASA to make not but not one but two awards. So they just they're that that's a participation trophy for. They want to make three. There's a third company too that also wants the grant, but they're pretty sure they're not getting it. But just think about how funny that is coming from these these people, <laughs> these fucking bootstrap bullshit art artists. Like Bezos is like crying because his team lost the little league game and then he gets a ten billion dollar fucking participation trophy. Well the logic is they don't want all their eggs in the same place. But imagine if it was just like a state funded space program, like a uh revered space program that got shit done that was completely state funded and uh made real progress while they were operational and working at operational amounts of money. I don't know. Imagine a country that had something like that once. We've got a new one, man. Space Force. <laughs> I mean, we had NASA. How I, NASA. I know. Fucking gutted, but yeah. Now they're just bossing NASA <laughs> around when it's con- when just to help their their petulant little whiny bitch kid billionaires who like are like like slap fighting each other. Like Bezos sure. and Musk are such preening little babies. <laughs> I'm sure you already know this, or maybe you don't. Maybe I'm going to surprise you, but I think you must already know. You did see what Bezos bought right after he got this $10 billion grant from the government, right? Was that his yacht that has its own yacht? Oh, fuck no. He bought MGM Studios the day after for $9 billion. Oh my God, I didn't know that. $9 billion. So the government really gave him a $10 billion grant to go out and buy MGM Studios. No one should give him grants ever for anything, not even for a dollar. What the fuck is going on? It's I mean, I know what's to going pay on, but it's just in America. It's just fucking awful. Could could they have wiped out all student loans for that? No, I, I actually I looked into like what 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 we could really get with ten billion, and it it would help a lot. It could help, ten billion could obviously help a lot of people, but like a nationwide program, it wouldn't. It wouldn't cover. I mean, like, I think to and to erase all student debt is like a trillion dollars, okay. which just goes to show you how much, how predatory and insane student debt but is. That's not real. So all it really takes is a keystroke. Well, right. I we mean, talked about that one time, but well, and I mean, none of this is real, really. Like, if we want to, if we want to put our MMT hats on, like, it's almost kind of like. Okay, it's disgusting, but fine, give Bezos his little whiny bitch money. But then also just write a check for a trillion dollars, enact Medicare for all, write another check for a trillion dollars, get rid of this predatory debt, you know? Um, but that's, but see, that doesn't happen. So we have to sit around and look at articles like this, where the richest man on earth is getting free money from the government for no reason. Well, I mean, those rich people own 25% of the American GDP. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which what I mean is that's they deserve stuff. They, they have control it. the wealth. They have everything. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, and oh, and and just Bernie Sanders is just so yeah. Whether you feel sorry for him or are kind of pissed at him, like he's just in a he's in like a lower spot than I feel like he's ever been. Because remember when I mean, I think even you were like trying to muster some positivity before and saying like, Oh, well he's gonna be the what is what is his position? Chair. Now? Yeah. And chair he's not he's just whatever. getting steamrolled on everything through that position. He, it's Yeah. He's not doing getting anything done other than it just seems like kicking a man while he's down. I was like, hopeful. I, but I knew he wouldn't be able to do anything be, like for one because he said from the beginning I will serve the Biden agenda. Like he said that. Um so here's where we are and that's the thing is that bernie sanders himself has to sign off on this bezos bailout thing and it, there's a quote like right at the beginning of the article from sanders here that says i mean he does okay he he is trying to eliminate the 10 billion for bezos um he says he introduced a last minute amendment to eliminate the 10 billion dollars quote it doesn't take it doesn't 
It does not make a lot of sense to me that we would provide billions of dollars to a company owned by the wealthiest guy in America. Yeah. Well, that's... But it makes sense to people to give it to the second wealthiest guy in America. Isn't Elon Musk number two? He... It keeps going back and forth. I think Bezos is still on top. I don't know. They're they're, they're very... They're almost equal, which is why they really hate each other. Like... um. And that's why they're having this little, like, kids who can't share their toys type argument right now. I wonder what film studio Elon Musk is going to buy. Oh, God. God. See, like, Bezos buys a film studio, and, like, I don't really expect it to change much. Like, the movies are probably going to be basically the same. But fucking Musk buys a studio. It's going to be all his, like, vanity projects and shit. It's just going to be, like, him, like... He'll just become like he'll become like the leader of the fucking Avengers in some movie. Well, he's be not like rich actually to buy I've Disney. been Iron Man the whole time and I'm alive again. I don't think he's rich enough to buy Disney. Maybe I'm wrong. Um No. Well, I don't know. I don't know. He probably it's... is, actually, but I don't know. I, mean, I guess he could buy a stake in the company, however that works. Yeah. Never understood why owning a stake gets you gets you so much power in a company. But well, it depends on how big your stake is. I mean, like I guess if you have a T bone, it's a big <laughs> stake. Jesus. I kind of knew a fucking meat joke was coming. <laughs> uh, now I just had a hard L recliner in my room. <laughs> um. And and this whole thing, this SpaceX versus Blue Origins, like they want to, they just want to put, they want to put astronauts on the moon, which is like essentially a meaningless gesture at this point. Like been there, done that. I mean, I, obviously there could be more to explore on the moon, but like I don't know, it's just so. I mean, it all just seems I'm, so absurd, given like the state of the world. <laughs> I'm not against going to space, personally. I'm not either. I'm saying priorities. I do think there are th- better things to be prioritizing at the moment. Like, what? like even like when I look at the news, I think, why isn't every every fucking resource going into climate change? Like, literally, which is I think I honestly think a lot of well, I mean, the obvious thing is, is that a lot of people think that it's basically. A foregone conclusion that like there's going to be climate disaster um and even though i think like in his in deep in his brain people people like uh musk and bezos think that they're going to essentially live forever they also know that if everything goes to shit they'll be fine yeah um and the politicians who don't care who do accept that they probably will die one day also don't care because look who runs our fucking uh government they're everyone you've got to be like 78 or older to be in the government nowadays that is Um, true do you think we'll ever have a young president again i guess we will probably have a young president president pretty soon (laughs) i don't know president aoc next time around it's gonna be mtg She's going to yeah. be the next president. Watch her fucking win. That's honestly like, it, I mean, look at, listen to what we've just been talking about for the last like hour or so. Like the world is fucking crazy. Of course that could happen. I mean, I think once Donald Trump wins the presidency, like you can't really dis- discount a lot of possibilities anymore. Oh, well, he's, he's clamoring to run again. Everything I've read. So it looks like that might just be what happens. Yeah, maybe. And I get, I don't know. It's just amazing to me that he's not dead. <laughs> but um, money. That's the other health. thing is when, when I keep hearing about like Biden, because Biden, of course, retracted what he what he said uh, on the campaign trail, which was like, oh, I I I, I wouldn't run twice. I'm going to be a one term president. And like immediately he gets in and is like, yeah, Jack, this is great. You know, see how much more ice cream I've been eating. <laughs> I want to do it again. Like it's just it's his brain can't even f- understand what 2024 means. So he's just like, yeah, keep doing this. Yeah. I mean, 
People Who love knows? me. Especially the left. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Especially progressives. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let, so, like, maybe circling back to what we opened with, right? Um, <laughs> the the left-loving Biden. That was not just one article, okay? If you, like, you, you search... Um, oh shit, this is the wrong thing. I just searched Biden run over Israel again. Um, did he, did he drive? Is that where he took the F-150? Yeah, he drove it right over the country. <laughs> anyway, there were like, there were just a ton of articles that were all saying like, Things leftists like were skeptical, but no, they love Biden. It's just like, I can't think of more blatant lies and propaganda um, Joe Biden has proven progressives wrong, and they're loving it. Yeah, it's a fucking McDonald's ad. I was that. Uh, uh, it's so sick how that immediately put the McDonald's uh, jingle in my mind when you said that too. Yeah. Um, Do you order your BTS meal? Huh? Oh, I mean the the special at Korea McDonald's right now is the BTS meal. Oh, All the, the chicken nuggets are cha- shaped like Jamin. Are you serious? No, <laughs> because I wouldn't put it beyond that. But like, actually, I I don't have any problems with BTS. I think they're fine as far as pop music goes. But um, they I do think the have K-pop a pop industry is another yeah, whole whole that's other a whole thing. other thing. Um, but <laughs> the BTS mill is maybe the most boring McDonald's mill I've ever heard of. Like, you would think like maybe they'll have an exciting burger or something. The BTS mill is a 10-piece chicken nuggets, a small fries, and a Coke. Well, you got to watch your figure if you want to be uh, in a K-pop. I mean, that's already too much. I've seen, like, those things about, like, the daily, like, routines and diets of, like, these K-pop stars, and it's, like, one leaf of iceberg lettuce. <laughs> and, like, it's actually like kind that. of insane that they can stand with how much exercise they do. Yeah. If that's what they're eating. But yeah, I've seen that stuff too. Uh, I th- yeah. I think it's a lot worse for girls than guys. It's in like most of life, but you know, so it goes. I was going to say that too, but then I stopped myself because I know that I know that a lot of the guys like go through a lot of, uh, they like e- kind of equally develop eating disorders. Yeah, that's um, true. Um, and some of them, been... and, and there's less, uh, you know, there's been suicide in both boy and girl bands here. Like yeah, quite a bit from stress. I mean, and- we get, we we should do a we should do a K-pop episode. Actually, I'll write that down. See, I'm probably more friendly to it than you, but I also I do have problems with the industry. I think the industry is pretty. I mean, I'm not talking about like the music. Like, I think some of the music is fine, actually, but um. I can't help but think of how kind of gross the industry is whenever I see a lot of it. Um, let's see here. What did I leave out, if anything? Amazon's crying pods. <laughs> Those are pods that you eat that make you cry, right? <laughs> Sweet release. Because, you know, once you become so rich and powerful, men like Bezos have a hard time crying. But for like health reasons, you have to find you have to find a way to cry, and sometimes the best way to cry is just to take a pill. Yeah, that's what it is. Cool. Here's the With official. Amazon. I wanted to provide a place that's quiet they, that people could go and focus problems. on their mental and emotional well-being. I assume it's not actually a pill. The Zen Booth is an interactive kiosk where you can navigate through a library of mental health and mindful practices to recharge that internal battery with okay. Amazon. That was just um, a little spot put out by Amazon. And so to paint you a picture, there's like a giant Amazon warehouse and there's this tiny, like I would say phone booth sized um, booth. <laughs> and it's for people to go into when they need to like regain their sanity because they're losing it from working at an Amazon warehouse. Um, they really should just put a toilet in there too. So people can like two birds, one stone, you know, since apparently yeah. toilet time is a, 
counterproductive in Amazon. But uh, it's just really sad and, and weird and, again, seems like something from a dystopian novel. Like, <laughs> and then, this might not be true, but I feel like I read something that said that, like, the time that people use going into these things is, like, actually docked from their pay. Maybe that's not true. I don't know. But I would like to actually know more about the official, um, way, like, how they're used because like it's not like, like if you just went in there we're like i'm having a mental breakdown like i'm gonna need an hour they would probably be like no get back on the floor and start picking through these boxes it's it's probably just another place to piss <laughs> just just a box with no plumbing whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> just just smells like the worst thing in the world no like inside and it what's funny is did you watch the video no, I I okay. didn't get around to watching that video. Well, when they they go inside and there's like it just it actually just looks like a really tiny office cubicle. So there's a computer screen, that and I don't watches you, huh? The computer screen watches you. I'm sure it is <laughs> probably making sure people aren't I don't know jerking off or something, but um, uh, and then there's like there's like. There's like a plant. There's like a little plant on the like on the shelf to make it feel like peaceful. It's just very, all very false and artificial. And yeah, like it, what it shows this woman doing when she goes in there, she's like staring at like the screen that just has a bunch of like squares on it, and it's like it's doing some sort of like simple sort of mental exercise game or something with her. And she's describing it as like, it's just a place to go and recharge your batteries and like, you know, like stop crying all the time. And she doesn't even yeah. say that, of course, but that's what it's probably used for more than anything. It's just, um, yeah, you want to cry privately and you're not allowed to go into the bathroom to do it anymore. So, hey, critics of Amazon, we care. We care about our employees we built one crying pod per every 100,000 customer or uh, employees. <laughs> it's weird. It's just a weird shitty thing that reminds you that Amazon is no good. Beat the unions. Remind you that Amazon beat the unions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they probably there's probably like there's probably like subliminal uh messaging in the computer whatever those little like mental mental exercise games are that are like it's just flashing like no unions <laughs> um <laughs> bezos loves you <laughs> like, um freedom is slavery and so on um i guess maybe just one more thing which is that joe biden is a pervert and, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that and an accused Sex offender? Sexual right. assaulter. I was going to say rapist. I mean, I would say that would count as rape, what's described in that accusation. Of course it, of course it, of course it is. Why Didn't you I? get the memo? Tara Reed's not to be trusted. Yeah. So Tara Reed was like trending again, and I'm not even sure why, but um, I was, in any case, um, you know, it's just like another chance for everyone to weigh in and like all of these ghoulish people who love Biden. Um, I saw I saw just an image, right? That was like a, it was this woman at like a like a MAGA Trump rally or something. It must have been like during the campaign of the uh, 2016 election. And she was holding his or what was it on her shirt was written. Trump can grab me by the, and then there's an arrow pointing down. Um, and like, I think a lot of people were saying that, um, sure. people, people tell me that a lot of people were saying that, but the thing is, is I remember in the lead up to this, uh, most recent election, people saying the total equivalent about Biden, which was even if he did, even if he did it, even if he did that thing to Tara Reid, like, it's still better than having Trump in the White House. Um, and then, but someone found a, a picture of someone at like a pro Biden rally. And um, 
I wish I had in front of me. It doesn't really matter. But they were waving a sign that said, Joe Biden could rape me and I would still vote for Trump. He meant to say Biden, not Trump. Like something to that effect. Um, so again, I say spot, spot the huge harm reduction difference between these two candidates and uh, <laughs> let me know when you find it because I haven't found it yet. Um, and yeah, so then whenever this stuff comes up, like people people bring out like the video montages of Biden, like very, very creepily touching young girls, like in front of the camera and just making them very uncomfortable. He's been accused by seven other women besides Tara Reid, not of quite the same extreme behavior, but of inappropriateness, I guess they would call it. Like yeah. touching and unwanted kissing, things like that. And like some people want to defend, <laughs> actually defend Biden. And and this has been going on since like the election, but like, oh, he's just, he's just an old grandpa. Grandpas are affectionate like that. And it's like, okay, even if that's true, maybe they're affectionate that way to like their grandchildren. And then that's not so weird, but these are strange strangers. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if anyone is listening to this who doesn't already know all this stuff and hasn't seen all this stuff, like, you kind of have to see it for yourself. Like, I can't really paint a, a, too good of a picture of it, but... He's a very touchy person. Touchy. And then, like, so, so then there were these other recent things came up where he... um, What did he do? He... He was talking about George... Jo- George Floyd's daughter um because the the White House recently had like the Floyd family come visit the White House to do a bunch of fucking disgustingly exploitative photo op shit and like Nancy Pelosi was also like creepily rubbing the back of this little girl's head and during some photo op thing like you, you see the the look in this little girl's face is just like what the fuck? Like, why is this yeah. eerie why lady touching, touching me? me? But then Biden said, um, he saw George Floyd's daughter and quote, or she threw her arms around me, gave me a big hug, and wanted to sit in my lap. And like he said this like when asked a que- like a question that has nothing to do with any of anything that could possibly relate to that. It's just like that's where his mind goes first is like the little girl sat on my lap. And like some okay, maybe maybe it's reading too much into that, but when you compile it together with all of this other stuff, these other accusations, at the very least, like people should be like honestly assessing it and being like, is this really the benevolent man that we keep painting him to be? And then, he, and then he had one more thing, like right after that, he was giving some speech. Um, where was it? Yeah, this one. So <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what the context of the speech was. I think it had something to do with the military. And um, actually here, I think I could just play it. Let's listen to what he has to say. So he's like talking about, he's just doing like these kind of, like platitudes about the military is great and you're all heroes, blah, blah, blah. And then in the middle of that, he just, he, a little girl in the audience catches his eye and he just can't help just like, and there's, there's a woman um, doing the sign language, like version, like translation of what he's saying. And you can just see the look on her face when Biden gets to this part where she's like, what the fuck am I signing here? Like, <laughs> um, it, It's just like a couple seconds long. Hang on. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm honored to be joined today by Governor Northam and by two great representatives of the Commonwealth, Congressman Laurie and Congressman Scott. Representatives, is a, again, his slurred speech. He doesn't drink. He's like never been a drinker. This is just senility. And I want to thank uh, thank you for all that you do to represent these service veterans because they're devoted to you. It's their family members, the caregivers, survivors, 
will call Virginia home. I'm especially honored to share the stage with Brittany and Jordan and Nathan and Margaret Catherine. I, uh, I love those barrettes in her hair, man. I tell you what, and look at her. She looks like she's 19 years old sitting there with her, like a little lady in her wedding squad. Brittany, you're doing triple duty. To those who couldn't he- maybe hear through all his fucking slurred bullshit, fucking who knows what drugs he's on to try to counteract even that slurred bullshit. I love those little barrettes in your hair. Man, I tell you what. Look at her. She looks like she's 19 years old sitting there like a little lady with her legs crossed. Heh. <laughs> Heh. Strange thing to say. Very presidential. Very normal. I'm so glad we're back to all this normalcy. And decorum. <laughs> Can you imagine any other candidate, like at any other time, saying this type of shit and Democrats still like defending it? Like, I, I guess what always comes to my mind first is like, okay, imagine Trump said that. Of course they would go insane. But imagine Bernie Sanders said that on the campaign trail. Like, it would just be. They would fucking burn his house down. They would well, go to Vermont and burn his house ever down. ever saying something like that. No, I can't either. That's what I'm saying, though, is like, but people just let it slide because, oh, that's just Joe and his gaffes. Like, no, that's not an excuse. <laughs> yep. <sighs> I didn't think it was possible for me to hate Joe Biden more, but every every news item I see every day makes me dislike him more um yeah well well (laughs) that's a weird note to go out on you can (laughs) i'm sure tomorrow will give you new reasons yeah probably um not tomorrow the next day yeah i probably there's probably already something circulating right now as we speak (laughs) but um yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should have thrown that in earlier with the other <laughs> Joe Biden shit. No, it's okay. <laughs> I feel like I want, we should end on something beyond that. Well, we can end with recommendations. How about that? Sure. Let's end with recommendations. Yeah, Do you I have just one? realized I got to go really soon. So, um, did I recommend another round on the podcast? No. Uh, I really like another round. I watched it finally. I've been on my list for a while, but it's uh, about a uh, group of um, high school teachers who um, are a bit bored with life, I guess, maybe even depressed, who uh, read a study about uh, how man is born with a alcohol deficiency and that honestly everyone would just function better if they were always at 0.05 BAC and they decide to run an experiment where they throughout the day keep their alcohol level at 0.05 which is like two drinks an hour it's not that much but you know it's enough to get like a nice little buzz maybe um if you've got the control to only drink two drinks an hour which I've never have because I always hit ignition and I just want to drink over and over anyways um and um, they like it. And then they decide to take the experiment farther and see what it's like. What if we uh, increase the amount of alcohol? And things go a bit sideways as they start increasing the amount of alcohol. But um, it's a really good movie. I really enjoyed it and highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I just watched it last night, finally, too. It's really, really great. Uh, it, it's a Danish film? I think so. Yeah, it is. And uh, Mads Mikkelsen, who I always think is awesome, is the the lead in it, and uh, he does a really good job as well. I think it wasn't part of their thing that they, part of their self imposed rule in the beginning is we we drink only during the day and we we can't go past eight o'clock because that's what Hemingway did. Yeah, it is. And. Um, I I kind of don't believe that about Hemingway, by the way. <laughs> he has. I don't believe that that was the case, but he did say that. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm sure that I drink all drink. day and then I stop at eight and then, and, and what was the idea? And then he starts writing at night. Yeah. When he's sober. Yeah. 
he'd always claim that's what his process was. I mean, I guess it's possible. It sounds that sounds so counterintuitive, miserable to me. But um, yeah, I definitely recommend that movie along with you. Um, did did you watch it and think maybe I should start day drinking? <laughs> my brain no, because went like there. like you like you said <laughs> just before, like. I don't I don't have the the willpower to have two drinks in an hour. Like that sounds like insanity <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, two drinks um, would easily lead into six drinks in the hour, seven drinks in the hour. Yeah. I mean like well anyway, I don't want to sp- I mean I guess people can infer like where things go in the movie, but yeah. They also kind of uh in a scientific way, lose their willpower. <laughs> like, yeah, I like when they're having that discussion and they're like, um, they're like, well, because like it's it's been going well so far for everybody. Like, we're so much happier and like we're I'm teaching better than I ever have. And uh, but what if some people are born with even a worse alcohol deficiency? <laughs> Couldn't we be one of them? So that means we got to drink more to make up for it. Um. When really all that is is them like building a tolerance to drinking every day. But um, yep, uh, I'm gonna separately though recommend a a movie. Um, There's a documentary from the 1997 uh, called "Hands on a Hard Body," which definitely sounds like a porno title. I guess Um, it's uh, let's see. Let's just read the copy here so I can go faster. Um, It's about an endurance competition that took place in Longview, Texas, or as uh, Jason calls it, Longview, the fake South. Um, Fake South. (laughs) The yearly competition pits 24 contestants against each other to see who can keep their hand on a pickup truck for the longest amount of time. (laughs) Whoever endures the longest without leaning on the truck or squatting wins the truck. Five minute breaks are issued every hour and 15 minute breaks every six hours. And it's a really entertaining film. Like some of the, some of the people that were doing this um, uh, are just really interesting characters. One thing I like, I haven't watched this probably for like a long, long time. Um, But one thing I remember thinking about was like, am I like watching this in a kind of elitist way? Because everyone's like, as you can imagine, none of these people are like, uh, upper middle class people. They tend to, they're they're like lower class and, you know, they all have like a Texas drawl. Um, so maybe part, part of me when I was, uh, I don't know, more of a a Yankee asshole was like (laughs) laughing at the fact of these people being kind of uncultured or, I I don't know. I don't think it was even that though. I think it's just fascinating because it's a weird behavior, you know? Yeah. Um, It's a weird competition. I'm seeing right here. Tarantino says that this is one of his go-to movie recommendations that that's a ringing endorsement, I guess. And um, (laughs) really strangely, Right, right before Robert Altman died, he was developing a feature-length film based on the documentary. Which, oh, wow. I don't. That's kind of strange. Um, I think just watch the documentary. You don't need to like turn it into a high-stakes drama like it already was. But yeah, it's just a. It's like an oddity, and these contests, I guess are kind of bit like all around the country to some degree, but there it's, I think maybe in the way that Texas really loves like high school football. They also love these hands on a hard body competitions. And like, cause some of the people I think I remember in the documentary were like, like veterans who had like tried the, had like gone into these competitions like dozens of times and were like, I'm definitely going to win boy. This is my year. Yeah. Hands on a hard body. Sounds good. I've actually never heard of it. I'll check it out. Yeah. You'll, yeah, I think you'll like it. Definitely. All right. I think we should say bye because I have to, I have to uh, go. Yeah, me too. All right. Uh, See you later. Uh, Heat death 
Pod.com, Com. et cetera. Bye. Twitter. Bye. I'll talk to you later, Josh. <laughs> See ya. Look, here's the deal. Let me say this simply and clearly. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, oh, you know the you know the thing. You know how we talk about it. Are we the people? Folks, we gotta. It's just yeah. but you gotta, I mean, the, the we gotta reassure look, my my message to everybody I talk to is play the radio make sure the television excuse me make sure you have the record player on at night the, the, the phone make sure the kids hear words i got a lot of i got hairy legs that turn that 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 that, that, that turn uh, uh um blonde in the sun and the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again they look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Um, you know, there's a, uh, during World War II, uh, you know, where Roosevelt came up with a thing uh, that, uh, you know, was totally different than a, than the, the it's called, he called it the, you know, the World War II, he had the war, the, the war production board. Hello, darkness, my old friend. $1.2 billion in overtime was denied by our, for hourly workers who were not unionized. $1.2 billion. So you go ahead and you stack spaghetti sauce at a store in, in, in a supermarket. You control the guy or the woman who runs the, run, run, brings out the carts on, 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 on a forklift. What happens? They make you management. So would you like to say, say a couple of words? <laughs> Am I supposed to speak now or is, yes. is Karen supposed to speak? I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble here. Well, it's me. Okay. Well, you know, there's that great philosopher and he talked about Jill puts notes up on my, uh, on my mirror when she wants me to, more I shave, uh, to get messages across to me. And what presidents say matter. The former vice president suggests the black community lacks diversity of thought. We choose truth over facts. The first voice recording was made in 1860. It was a 10 second fragment of the French folk song Au Clair de la Lune recorded by inventor Edward Leon Scott de Martinville. But who will make the final voice recording and when? What will it be? Who will hear it?